so that we can share to those who might miss today's uh, briefing. So just in case uh, they miss out, then they can follow up from our YouTube channel later on. We'll upload the videos on YouTube. Okay, BOM, Obai, any other students from Bachelor of Marketing? So at least now you have uh, uh, two students uh, you doing Bachelor of Marketing, yeah? so Mira and uh, and Obai can be uh, group mates later on. And we have Bachelor of Finance. Any students from Bachelor of Finance, BOF, can you just type BOF? <coughs> Okay, go on, Ikmal. Any other view of students? Okay, good, good. And last one is Bachelor of Financial Engineering. Anyone taking Bachelor of Financial Engineering, please type BFE. BFE. Okay, good. Yubina, TNT. Oh, BFE students are very proactive, huh? very fast in typing. Okay, very good. Okay, anyone doing PhD? You know what? Okay, plus if you are doing PhD, then you're in the wrong section. Eh? This is for undergraduate programs. So welcome all students, welcome to FOM, welcome to MNU. So for our starters, I'll just quickly brief on the faculty. Of course, the more you spend your time here, the more you get to know the faculty, the faculty members and the facilities that we have in MNU. Okay, I will just start with uh, some briefing on our query uh, on our vision mission. So basically the faculty's vision is to be an ancient premier management faculty with global recognition and professional accreditation. And our mission is to inspire graduates to be innovative in meeting industry expectation, can spearhead entrepreneurial effort, but at the same time, of uh, maintain high level of integrity and ethical values. So this is also important because we want our students to be successful. We want we want them to be uh, ground breakers, ground shakers in the industry. But at the same time, we must hold on our ethical values. We must act with high level of integrity. So that's important. So not money is not everything. Eh? Just remember that money is not everything. At the same time, you want to make money, you want to be successful but you must be an ethical person, okay? And what's the unique selling point for our faculty? Because there are so many faculties in MMU, and of course, there are other business faculties at other universities. So we can summarize our unique selling point in five points. First one, we always proud to admit that we have an entrepreneurial faculty. So when we say entrepreneurial here, means it's not only about encouraging our staff and students to start up their own businesses, because we do have a center called Entrepreneurship Development Center, that will assist students. If you have a business idea, you're interested to start a business, there will be some assistance that we can give to the students. But at the same time, we also have staff who started their business. And entrepreneurial here also means that you must think like an entrepreneur, be innovative, being able to solve problems. So one thing, one uh, approach that we apply in faculty is what we call the design thinking approach to problem solving. So once you get enrolled into our programs, okay, many of our lecturers are trained as design thinking trainers, and they will try to embed design thinking values and approach in the delivery of your programs, okay? And second one is commendable faculty. So we have a good mix of uh, faculty members who are very good in terms of their research. Some are very uh, prominent figures in industry. Some have vast industry experience. Some have vast experience doing corporate training. So that's why you see in terms of the, the way lectures are delivered, it's not gonna be a typical lecture or teaching class whereby uh, the lecture will speak and the student will just listen Okay, and just angu angu and geling geling if they want to, if you can see their face from the Google Meet. Okay, but they will use different pedagogy activities that we normally use for corporate training. And all our programs are recognized. Okay, we have distinguished programs, especially if you're doing BA, CC, Bachelor of Accounting, our programs are recognized by CIMA, ICCA, ICAW. And when you enroll into our Bachelor of Accounting program, basically you are entitled for full exemption. Okay, full exemption that are given by all these professional bodies. Okay, so no one can declare that they can get more exemption than MMU because we have achieved the full exemption. And our lecturers are also active in doing research. Okay, this is, will be useful when you embark into your final year project or you're thinking about doing your assignments, the research skill that you need in order to complete all your assignments. And we believe that when we have a complete ecosystem and environment to assist our students, we will be able to generate or to build well-rounded students. Okay, when we say we're on the missile, it's not only focusing on an academic. Yes, you want to do well your exam, but at the same time, we want our students to be good in terms of communication skill, leadership skill, time management skill, and whatnot. So this is our unique selling point for our faculty. Okay, so just in, I will just introduce the core management team of MMU, uh, sorry, of FOM. Okay, these are the key people that you need to look for 
when you have any issues other than your program creator later, but maybe you can just look for your program creator first and then only you look for these people. <laughs> first one is the team, of course. Okay, so my name is Dr. Mama Pyrus. Rahim can call me Pyrus. Okay, you can check Pyrus also fine. Don't call me Uncle Pyrus. But I have a long history with MNU because way back in 1999, I was among the first, the pioneer back to move to Sabaya campus. So I did my degree in FOM. Okay, I have started working in FOM way back in 2004. Now I'm here at the Dean of FOM. So I'm proud. I have a long history with FOM. So it's like when the saying goes, when people say, if you bleed, you bleed FOM blood. Okay, so that's uh, the, the most essential thing. So next is we have uh, Dr. Ruzana. Dr. Ruzana is the Deputy Dean for Academic and International Relations. Okay, so Dr. Zana is here. Obviously, the camera will be a bit slow to focus. But she said, you want to come here and introduce yourself? Okay. Uh, yeah. okay, so Dr. Zana is here. So for those who are here, that's Dr. Zana. So she's in charge of the academic programs, okay? And if you're interested to know about the potential to spend time overseas for exchange program, okay, she is the person you should look for. And then we have the, our deputy team for research, okay? Most uh, time students who are doing postgraduate studies, uh, okay, the PhDs, masters, MBA or not, will be dealing with Dr. Mageswari. And the MC just now, okay, our all cheerful, all lovely Dr. Aziz, who is the deputy team for student experience alumni. So when you have issues, for example, you need advice, okay, on like uh, student related matters, okay, where when to go for internship and things like, things like that. So you can always go and look for Dr. Aziz. He will handle all the students experience or student affairs in the faculty. Okay, so that's the main uh, uh, core team. And then we also have the admin team because most of the time when you come to the FOM office, you'll be dealing with the administrative or administration team. Okay, so our session team is led by Pon Azmi Yati. Okay, she's here. Pon Azmi, for the sake of those here, okay, that is Pon Azmi, yeah. So she's the senior manager. So in a corporate term, we call her the COO, Chief Operation Officer of the faculty. So she runs the faculty office and she is assisted by four assistant managers. And depending on the program of your study, uh, uh, you can hope you can deal with the respective uh, assistant manager. For example, for those doing degree on the graduate today, the most important contact person for you will be Miss Dalila Fati. Okay, for Dalila, can you just say hi to the students? Okay, so Miss Dalila will handle all undergraduate degree programs. Whereas later on, with uh, some of your friends who are doing foundation diploma, they will be dealing with Miss Nick Nora Azma. Okay. Okay, and just for your information, currently we have okay that that is Pon Dalila. Okay, so if you have any issues, you just email to Pon Dalila. For, for assistant if, if you are doing degree. Okay, thank you, Ponilla. You want to sing a song, Ponilla? <laughs> okay, so next is in terms of our borrow manpower, we have 14 administrative staff that includes our technician, our class, our assistant managers, our managers. And on top of that, we have uh, 86 lecturers. So that's why in total, just nice figure, 100 staff in FOM. But as of last month, we had 102. Two just uh, retired, they, they reached 60 years old, mandatory time age, so now we are left with 100 staff in the faculty. Okay, so just a quick uh, introduction about the program. Of course, uh, all of you are coming for the undergraduate program, but basically in the faculty, we provide a complete set of programs that you can undergo. Even after you finish your degree, you already have an idea what program you should proceed afterwards. So that's why we start on foundation, diploma, and degree and degree if you have friends so actually they say they want to do degree but they can't afford because they need to work they need to do a part-time degree then they can also enroll into what we call the distance education program there are three distance education programs where students can study on online okay and this is targeted for working adults not for you guys you guys are still young so you are in, in the seven full-time undergraduate programs and on top of that once you finish your degree then you can proceed to your masters okay we have option for master of uh, business admin or executive MBA, Master of Philosophy, uh, and if you want the title DR at the front of your name later on, you can have two choices whereby you can either go for DBA, Doctor of Business Admin, or the Doctor of Philosophy, PhD. Okay, so that's why it's a complete process. We hope that after you finish your degree, you get to enroll into your master's program, and then you get to enroll into your doctorate program, then you'll be a homegrown FOM alumni afterwards, okay? So just a quick, uh, just a, a bit of interaction about other programs that we do, okay, especially for exchange program. 
before COVID-19, before MCO, we used to have a lot of physical exchange program. Whereby our student, we used to host students from Canada, you see, uh, uh, from Japan. And also we had a group of students who went to Indonesia for uh, uh, one week or two weeks program with our counterparts because we do have MOUs and MOAs with various partners uh, from other countries. We hope that after the situation is getting uh, gets better, then maybe we can resume the physical exchange program. But currently, we do have some plans to do some virtual exchange. Okay, whereby maybe for two weeks we can attend classes from Indonesia, and the students from Indonesia can attend two weeks of classes at NMU. So that's uh, something that will enrich your learning experience at NMU later on. Okay, and on top of that, we also want to uh, give our students industry exposure. Okay, in the past, we used to have a lot of uh, industry visits where we bring students to visit companies and whatnot. But due to COVID also, it, that is not possible. But it turns out to become an opportunity for us because I think last year, we had the most number of webinars that we had conducted, external talk engagement with our industry partners. Okay, and of course, for certain subjects, the lecturer will also appoint people from industry. We call these people ILP, Industry Learning Partners in which they will be sharing their industry experience in the respective classroom. So you will learn a lot from all this industry exposure. Okay, and for student affairs, last year itself, we had a lot of sessions, okay? So five of you are here, but the rest that are following us online, we will also have some engagement session to this. So this will not, will not be the first, the only session that you will have with the faculty. We will do more engagement session to check how you are doing, maybe the middle semester, at the end of semester, the start of new semester, because I know and we know that this is challenging period for everyone. So it's important for you to uh, keep us in the loop, update us on your situation, okay? And also we are proud to share that our students, basically when they go for their internship, industrial training, okay, they are hired, uh, appointed as interns at many of the big companies. Okay, so even for, for those who doing bachelor or something, the big, the big five firms uh, say, looking for our students. And even in April, later end of April, we have something uh, arranged with KPMG. They want to recruit interns and also potential graduates at the end of the year. So this is something that we work on and we are proud that our students are getting good feedback from the industry. Okay, on top of that, we also organize a lot of community engagement because I think in the university, as a learner person, it's not only about you going to class, you doing your activities, you also must be able to contribute to society. So that's why in NMU, we have a, a program called USR, University Social Responsibility. We get students involved to contribute to the community, maybe as part of assessment or maybe as part of the club activities later on. Okay, and we will also do a lot of sharing by our alumni. Okay, and in NMU, our alumni are called Pemata Dunia, Gem of the World. Even once you step into NMU as a student, the first day, you're already a Pemata Dunia of NMU, Pemata Dunia of FOM. So we also have a lot of sharing from our alumni that will share their experience, how it's like to work in industry, something that will inspire you, something that will motivate you to actually push harder and do better in your studies and also your life as a student in MMU. Okay, so these are some of our prominent alumni. Okay, there are a lot more, but these just are a few more, a few that we want to share. First one is Ms. Shirley Tan. Okay, she's uh, the managing director and founder of 23 an online apparel company. I think she has broken into the overseas market by now. And also another of our alumni is Dr. Dr. Nazri Khan. Anyone familiar? Never heard before, but your parents might be familiar because he's a very uh, prominent uh, speaker. If you watch Astro Wani, the news, normally he will talk about investment, how the economy is doing. So he's a very well-known speaker. He's uh, famous with his tagline, tak handsome, tak per janji kaya. It's okay if you're not handsome, as long as you're rich. Uh, that's his tagline, that's his saying, not me. Eh? Okay, so but he's a very prominent speaker. We are communicating with him. We hope to bring him and uh, do some session with our students soon. Okay, this, this is something that we are planning. Okay, on top of that, for research, of course, we our students, our lecturers are very good in their areas, subjective areas. So, you know, on top of teaching, our lecturers are supposed to publish papers, apply for research grant. So, on top of just the academic, what you learn from the book, you can also learn from the latest development in industry from all these research articles are published. Okay, so more about this later on once you get to do your assignments. Okay, so just a quick round of the facilities. I think just for the benefit those out there, 
I mean, I think you can follow our YouTube channel where you can see the aerial view of the building, okay, and also the, the, the camera view of inside. So this is the front office that you passed by just now. It's not as cheerful as before because there are not many students yet, but I think when we get more people coming in, of course, we get more crowd. Okay, it's going to be hit and happening. And normally when we have an exhibition and whatnot, we'll do in front of the four years itself. Okay, so this is how it looks in your lecture room, tutorial rooms. Okay, don't, don't be afraid. The one that you see on the right, top right corner is really exam setting. So that's how you set when you attempt for exam. That's not how we arrange for lecture class. For lecture class, normally there is a longer table and then you, you have time, you have uh, opportunity to discuss your classmates. Okay, and also, oh, okay, so the top left corner feature is actually the Siri lab, which we are in here. So this is what we call intelligent lab because they are multi purpose. Actually, that projector, even actually the task you can just touch when you project the projector, you can just touch on the wall itself. Okay, but now because we are using the video conference facility, that's why we are using this, uh, this side of the room. And we use this for actually when we have talks from industry or when we have, uh, uh, I would say, uh, training programs organized for the industry people. Okay, and also the bottom uh, right corner is actually the lab that we have. Okay, and then the top left is actually your F1 theater. Okay, initially we are planning to have this in the F1 theater, but that F1 theater can fit 300 people. Then if with this number of people, then it becomes too big for the crowd. So that's why we resorted to this venue. But when you have a chance, we'll use the, that venue. And the top uh, bottom corner, right bottom corner is actually the executive meeting rooms. Okay, so how do you connect with us? Okay, uh, we have our uh, website. Of course, this is the main website for MMU's website. And on top of that, we have our IG, we have our Facebook page, and also we have our YouTube channel. So later on, we'll try to share this video in our YouTube channel. So this is uh, the, the screenshot I put in my slide. It's very outdated, but by now we have so many videos there. So the aerial videos and also the FOM awards videos, because in the past, to encourage students to do well in their studies every semester, when you get a GPA of 3.67 and above, then you consider as a first class student first class owner student, and you will get what we call a Dean's List Award, okay? And we normally host as a small ceremony to actually appreciate, encourage our students to do well in their studies. But starting from last year, we did it online. So we did a virtual award ceremony. So please go through our uh, YouTube channel later and have a look at all the videos of your seniors. And hopefully at the end of the semester, when you start next semester, we can see your faces in the videos as a first class owner student, okay? Okay, so these are the main contact person for your program. So for those in this session today, for undergraduate, you can contact Puan Dalila Fati. Her email is Dalila Fati at mw.umai and her phone number is 338-512-5501. Okay, so I think I have reached at the end of my session. Even the Agini signal is... Stop lah, stop lah, okay? Talking too much already. Okay, so any question from the audience, any question from the audience here, any question from the audience at home, you can just ask question in the chat box if you have any. If not, I'll pass to the next uh, session. Any questions from students? Okay, any questions at home? Okay, thank you everyone. Okay, I'm signing off for now. Uh, I'm Dr. Muhammad Fairuz, Dean of Faculty Management. With that, thank you. I'll pass back to our handsome MC, Dr. Aziz. Thank you, bye. <laughs> Alright, if uh, Dr. Farus kata tadi, di DNK kata, uh, tak handsome tak apa lah sakit saya, tapi saya handsome dan saya kaya. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> alright, um, okay, just, just kidding, just kidding. Tak kaya pun, okay? Um, alright, <laughs> tak handsome. Okay, dah, uh, alright, so... Okay, so now uh, for the next itinerary, uh, I'm going to um, introduce you your academic advisor uh, for your program, okay? So basically, um, uh, this particular academic advisor uh, will assist you if you have any problems. Either it can be an academic problem, it can be a non-academic problem. Uh, so they usually be the first touch point if you have any issues relating to your studies. Sometimes when we study, it's not only about academic, right? Like I had a financial problem, I had a family problem. So if, uh, of course, we are not counsellors, we, we can't uh, counsel you on uh, putus cinta, ke, boyfriend lari, girlfriend lari, ke, whatnot. 
but we will be able to direct you to a correct person. All right. So because in MMU, we have counselor at the student affairs department. So uh, usually if you have any problem, uh, uh, for, for example, you are not sure uh, what subject you want to take, what subject that you should drop, what subject. So this, these are the person that you should, you should look at, uh, look into lah when you want to decide uh, anything regarding your academic uh, advisory, All right? So can we go to the next slide? Yeah, okay. All right. So for uh, this semester, all right, these are the academic advisor for your intake. So we have uh, Ms. Rapia Muhammad Zaini for Bachelor of Accounting. A very lovely lady, okay. Um, she solved a lot of problems <laughs> for our accounting students, very motherly, all right? So if you miss your mother, you can always uh, talk to Ms. <laughs> Rapia, <laughs> okay. And then uh, we have uh, Dr. Intan Soraya, okay. Uh, she will be uh, the advisor for Bachelor of Business Management. Uh, she is not uh, available today because she's teaching MBA uh, now, all right? So that's why she's not available. And then we have the most prominent professor. Uh, you are very, very lucky to have Prof Lai to be your academic advisor, okay? Um, she will be the advisor for Bachelor of Financial Engineering and Bachelor of Finance. Please do take this advantage to get her wisdom. Uh, how to? Uh, we have Prof Lai here. Prof Lai, do you want to say something? Yes, yes, yes. Hi, and nice to meeting you online. I yes. all my followers, whoever can see me. So, <laughs> so whenever you have an academic problem, even when facing the stress, please feel free to email me. Mm. Okay, so we will try our best to help you. Thank okay. you, Prof. Yes, thank okay. you, Prof. So, um, Prof Lai is doing some research on mindfulness. Ah, yes, so, yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes. <laughs> if you are feeling stressful, if you are feeling just please talk to Prof Lai and she will release your uh, tension. Yeah. So thank you, Prof. <laughs> okay. Next. All right. So we have Dr. Nur Hazli Ismail. Uh, Dr. Nur Hazli is available online. All right. Uh, she will be the advisor for Bachelor of Analytical Economics. Dr. Hazli, are you here? Yes. Hi. Hi. Assalamualaikum and a very good morning. I'm Dr. Noh Hazin from Econs Unit. I just want to wish all of you welcome to FOM. I do hope you have a good journey in MMU. Bye. Thank you, Dr. Lin. All right. Then we have uh, Dr. Malar. Dr. Malar Bizi, she will be the advisor for Bachelor of Enterprise Management System. Dr. Malar, are you here online? Yes. Your microphone is mute, Dr. Malal. Good morning to everyone. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah, welcome to our Faculty of Management, right? If you have any issues related to your studies or anything, right, you please contact me. Right? I can share my email ID and my contact number. Anytime you can contact me, right? So best wishes. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Malal. All right. And then we have Dr. Melissa. Okay, uh, she will be the uh, academic advisor for Bachelor of Marketing. Very beautiful lady, very soft spoken lady. But jangan main main ni aja. Dr. Mel, are you here? Wow, <laughs> this lady. First, first compliment, Dr. A, that I am soft spoken. Never. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Faculty of Management. I have here this young man who will be joining you as well, that will be the future movers and shakers of Malaysia. So for marketing students, you have made the right choice of um, choosing MMU. And I'm going to learn just theory as what our dean said. We will be going through a lot of technical analysis and um, the, the latest thing that he agreed. So welcome again, everyone. I'll see you soon. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Mel and the baby boy okay so and uh, yeah i think uh, that's all that we have for the uh, academic advisory okay 
So now for the next uh, itinerary, okay, uh, we are going to invite the uh, program coordinators, all right, uh, to share or their uh, program structure uh, for each of that particular program. Okay. So first, I'm going to invite uh, Madam Hamsatu Azura, okay, um, for Bachelor of Accounting. Hi everyone, Assalamualaikum and a very good morning to all of you and for those who are here. So I'm Hamsato, the Program Coordinator for Bachelor of Accounting Program. So first of all, how are you today? So for those who are on the online session, kindly write on the chat box if you feel great today, okay. Just type on the chat box that you are great today, type K. Okay. Nobody feeling great today? <laughs> wow. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thank you for those who has responded. Eh? Okay then. So uh, I'm going to introduce you our program here. And for those who are in here as well, I think that there are two students here from Bachelor of Accounting program. So welcome to all of you, to our faculty, to MMU, to our university as well. So these are our academic staff, whereby we have 17 lecturers, professors, doctors, and um, whereby at the top there on your left, uh, that would be our head of department, Dr. Abby, and the rest are the uh, staff under accounting unit or accounting department. And I don't have two pictures there because um, the pictures are not, <laughs> not been given. So we have all, all in all 17 staff there. So if you have anything, um, to deal with, especially with regards on the academic matters. So I'm the one who are you looking for, will be the program coordinator. And the, our head will be Dr. Abby and the rest, Dr. Aziz, is actually also from accounting department, the one who be introduced the academic advisor just now. And the rest are also there and you can find their email, their pictures in the FOM website. Okay. And then what we are going to prepare you as an accounting student whereby we are actually preparing you as a professional accountant that be competent and highly responsive to a dynamic business environment that will be our mission okay that will, what we want to achieve okay so we as an academician we're trying to prepare you to be like that a competent professional accountant and to achieve that educational objective there are 10 learning outcomes, which are actually, if you compare with other programs in our faculty, they have eight learning outcomes. But for accounting program, you have two additional learning outcomes because your program is really unique. Your program is really, really, really important in the faculty. Okay, so you need to be proud to become part of the accounting student under faculty of management. Okay, and this will be your program structure. As you know, for accounting program, your journey of study, you will be with us for four years. So whereby you can refer this program structure from your handbook later on. And I believe that every one of you has received your handbook. And I really highly encourage each one of you kindly, please, please, please follow the program structure so that you're able to graduate on time within four years of your study. So really highly encourage, highly encourage, kindly refer to your program structure every time that you want to enroll into the semester, into the new semester. Okay, you can refer this because it's so small here, you can refer this whole complete program structure in your handbook. And then from that, program structure, you will find out almost 80% of your credit value, which whereby for the four years of study, your total credit value are 146 credit hours, whereby almost 80% of your credit value consists of core subject. Because that will be the main thing that we need to cover 
for you to become a competent professional accountant in the future. So what would be the core subject there, that 80%? It consists of these five classification, accounting classification subject, which need covered financial accounting discipline, management accounting discipline, auditing, taxation, AIS, accounting information system, and finance. And each of that core subject, you will have several basic or foundation and advanced level. And this is also to show you whereby the one that at the top there will be the prerequisite for the rest of the advanced level. For example, here for financial accounting. So what are the subjects that fall under financial accounting category? Consists of fundamentals of financial accounting, FAR1, FAR2, corporate accounting 1, corporate accounting 2, public sector accounting, and accounting theory. Which means that if you want to enroll into FAR1 or FAR2, you need to pass first the fundamental of financial accounting. So the beginning level at the top there that represent the prerequisite for the rest of the subject for the advanced level. Same goes for management accounting, same goes for auditing, same goes for taxation, AIS, and then finance. So these are the five categories of core subject that you are going to cover throughout your four years journey. And besides those core subjects, you will also have other subjects which are not under accounting discipline, which have been listed here. And you can find this also in detail in the handbook. And besides that, you are also able to take a number of elective subjects. Elective here means optional, which is not compulsory. So you have a choice which subject that you want to take from the semester that you can refer from the program structure that has been posted in the handbook. So there are quite a number of elective subjects whereby the most popular elective subject would be global business services and who would be the teaching staff for that global business services? Dr. Aziz, the one that become the MC just now. Okay, so because he said that he's handsome, so that's why that become the very popular elective subject. Okay, all right then. So we have quite a number of elective subjects here and all these subjects up to you is a choice. And in fact, we also have elective subjects which are actually embedded with the professional um, qualification ICAEW, whereby you have a choice to take that ICAEW paper during your study by taking either business tax planning, tax compliance, or advanced financial accounting and reporting. So those are the elective subjects. And another difference between accounting program with other programs in this faculty, which is with regards on practical training, whereby for the accounting program, you have six months practical training Okay, as compared to other program and where you need to do your internship, it need to be go through the audit firm or any global business services type of organization. So you will have to refer to the um, practical training advisor, Dr. Nor Azlin later on, Dr. Azlin Sabrina later on with regards on this practical training. So you have six months practical training. And then another difference of this accounting program as compared to other programs in the faculty is in terms of assessment, whereby higher weightage of your assessment will be in terms of final exam. And since last year, our exam will be online final exam, which consists of 65% of your total mark for the subject. All accounting subjects, 65% will be final exam. And in here as well, I have, I have given the weightage of the practical training assessment as well. So you will go through this from time to time. Uh, once you enroll into our class, once you have entered into the classroom, so the lecturer will tell you every time at the beginning of the class with regards on the continuous assessment, but also the final assessment. Okay. Um, and then, as what been mentioned by the dean just now, yeah, our accounting program being recognized by the local, which is actually Malaysian Institute of Accountant, MIA, and we are being part, accredited 
by MIA, the accounting program, and we're also being recognized by ACCA, CIMA, ICAEW, CPA, and also MICPA. And as we mentioned by the Dean just now as well, we have full exemption for all those accounting professional bodies. So we have full exemption. So if you ask other universities out there, none of them has the full exemption for all accounting professional body. And in fact, we also have a strategic uh, alliance or MOU with several professional body, which means that you uh, you have an option, okay? You have an option to take some of the professional paper during your study, during your third year or final year of your um, study, whereby you manage, you have an option to take either of the ACCA paper that not be exempted, so you can take it during your study, or CIMA paper, whereby we have CIMA A star program, we have finance leadership program under CIMA, and then you are also able to take ICAW, whereby we have four strategic papers, three of them are elective, advanced auditing, that would be the compulsory core subject, which is part of the ICAW paper as well. Okay? And besides classroom activities, lecture, lecture and tutorial, you also have other activities whereby if you are active with the accounting students club, they have a lot of activities, which is one of them, one of the activities organizing an accounting student conference. So they are able to organize that whereby in here you will mingling with other accounting programs from other universities under this program. And we also have a lot of in, uh, external speakers that being invited into the class. For example, here, we have external speakers from MICPA. We have external speakers from Petronas. We have external speakers from CPA. And we have external speakers from MICPA. So you are not just here and learn only from the lecture, from the academic staff of the faculty, but you are going to learn beyond that from those who are external parties, the practitioner out there. So that's all. Thank you. If you have any problem with the academic matters, just email me on chapteraguna.comz at mmu.tdu.ma. Okay, bye. Okay, um, as mentioned, um, I am part of the Bachelor of Accounting uh, unit. You will be seeing me uh, in your second year, third year, and your final year. Tak boleh lari, okay? Ada tiap tahun, ada je I punya subject, alright? Uh, tapi pun kalau, uh, apa, dia kan nak bagi I load lah. Uh, kalau dia baik hati, tak nak bagi load. <laughs> alright, so uh, without any further ado, um, I would like to invite uh, Dr. Ratimah lah. Uh, for Bachelor of Enterprise Management System. Okay, hello, good morning everyone. Hope you all can hear me. Okay, so I am Dr. Atimala Kandan. I am the Program Coordinator for Bachelor of Enterprise Management System. And I know some students are joined through online for this program. I really welcome you all to Faculty of Management. In fact, I welcome each and every one of you to Multimedia University and Faculty of Management. So let me go through my program. Okay, so the program name is Bachelor of Enterprise Management System, which is quite a new program in Malaysia. This is the first program for offering a undergraduate degree program in Enterprise Management System. Uh, which launched three years ago. So as you can see, uh, this subject is a combination of uh, IT and business. Uh, in fact, I can say more 50% IT subjects and 50% uh, business subjects. Uh, you have the subjects about digital transformation skills, enterprise risk management, then the latest uh, technology, big data analytics is there. Also the very popular, software in enterprise resource planning, which we call as SAP. Also, you will get hands-on 
uh, exercise with this software here. So what you can become after this, uh, you complete this program. So you can be uh, IT business analyst. You can apply for ERP consultant, and of course you can become a data scientist as well. Okay. So how? So we are going to show you the code programs. Okay. So this is a simple uh, comparison of uh, how uh, people are uh, earning for these. Uh, job scopes okay so, and what is the demand for this one so as you can see we started this program three years ago by having an industry study and understanding what is the demand for uh, from the industry what the industry wants so accordingly we have prepared the curriculum and even we have revised this curriculum with the recent uh, uh, industry uh, feedback and we have improved our program and we are going to launch the new program which is called yes, Bachelor of Digital Enterprise Management in the coming uh, June, uh, June intake. So the components of this program is you have uh, MPU subjects which is called as university subject which is compulsory for all students to take. Then we have a fundamental subjects for 37 credit hours. Following, we have a core subjects, 17 credit hours. Then the specialization subjects for 35 credit hours, which is industrial training for three months, uh, which is for six credit hours. So on the total, you have 121 credit hours for the subject, and it is a three-year program. Okay, these are the university subjects compulsory for all students to take this one. And here you have the BEMS means Bachelor of Enterprise Management System, which is the current program that you already have registered. So in June, we are going to offer the new program, which is called Bachelor of Digital Enterprise Management. So which we have revised and we have added some new IT related subjects based upon the industry demand. Okay. So you can compare the subjects on your left and on your right uh, to see what is the difference. Uh, as you can see, along with the basics of uh, business uh, subjects, where you will learn about basics of business, accounting, economics, marketing, right? Also with introduction to IT. So all of these subjects are called as fundamental subjects. Then you have core subjects where you will learn subjects like database management system, data analytics using machine learning techniques, business process re-engineering, and we have added new subject in the BEM called multivariate data analysis where you have more skills on data analysis. Okay. Then we have a specialization subjects where you can compare uh, both the thing. Uh, though you have most of the subjects same, but you can see some subjects are added new to the BDEM. Uh, uh, okay, I don't have to go much detail with this because as freshers, you might not know uh, what is the content of each of the subjects so as and when you take the subject uh, you will understand what is it and if you have any doubts feel free to contact me okay so we have currently eight uh, academic staffs under the department of information technology here under faculty of management so we have a professor professor dr sarvaran mutaya then we have dr patrick uh, he is our head of the department, followed by Dr. Mageshwari. She is our deputy dean for uh, research. Then followed by me, I am the program coordinator. Then we have Dr. Anu, we have Dr. Lillian, we have Dr. Jimmy, and we have Dr. Sharmi. Each one carries their own portfolios. They have some expertise, and they are all very popular in their own areas. Okay. So having said that, any issues related to academic or anything related to your studies, feel free to contact us. We have a special Google Classroom for our BEM students. So you can join with the class code. We do have Facebook for BEMs also. So any issues, these are the persons that you can contact. Dr. Patrick So, who is the head of the department. Then followed by me, I am the program coordinator. Right? We do have a, a WhatsApp group for our BEM students where all the BEM students are currently in that group. Currently, we have 64 students in that group. So those who are joining to the BEMS program newly, you can contact me so that I will add you with our BEMS group. Thank you so much. Once again, welcome to you all to MMB.
Okay, thank you uh, Dr. Rati Mala um, for your sharing. I think next uh, <laughs> next we have uh, Dr. Chun is not here. Uh, I think she went somewhere. Can we have um, Ms. Hasliza for Bachelor of Business Management? Banyak pula nak jalan Banyak Banyak animation pula Okay <coughs> Okay, Assalamualaikum and very good morning to everyone. Um, my name is uh, Noh Hasliza Muhammad. I'm the co Program Coordinator for Bachelor of Business Management, yeah, BBM. Okay, all right, so uh, welcome everyone here as well as um, online. So I can see like few of you are uh, taking Bachelor of Business Management, one here. Right, and a few more at home. <laughs> All right, let me just take you through um, what is Bachelor of Management, what you're going to do for your next three years with us. Eh, sorry, Salah. All right, so first of all, I would, I would like to introduce our team. All right, so these are the people that you will see in your next three years, all the lecturers that will be teaching. Uh, all your courses, yeah, in BBM. So we have all the social professors, the senior lecturers, um, the lecturers, right? Uh, so these are all the theme for Bachelor of Business Management. All right, halfway to BBM, you know, like a few of you, maybe you are coming from the foundation today, uh, from the foundation program, yeah? Foundation in Management or Foundation in Business, like from MMU, the, the Foundation to Degree Students. Um, I think there are a few of you who are coming from Foundation, right? Um, diploma in Management from FOM, Diploma in Business Administration from FOB, as well as other diploma program from other institutions. Um, yeah, I think um, maybe the, the new students, I mean the fresh um, students, maybe they are coming from uh, other diploma program from other institutions. So uh, you can do a case-to-case -case credit transfer for the subject that uh, maybe I can match yeah, our syllabus. That one, uh, Ms. Dalila will give you further information on the credit transfer um, process. Yeah. Right, um, moving on to the subjects that you will take, um, like what has been mentioned by the other program, um, we have uh, all the MPU, MPU subjects, or we call it university subjects. Besides that, uh, you will have fundamental subjects, right? Fundamental subjects normally is the subjects that shared by other programs as well. You'll be taking it in your um, first year. Now, it will spread your first year, um, second year. Altogether, it will be 39 credit hours for this. Um, and then you will have your core subjects, yeah? 57 credits altogether for core subjects for BBM. Uh, they will, it will start from your first year, but it will be more uh, in your second and third year. So you'll be taking all these subjects. All right, uh, besides that also, you also have the elective subjects. Yeah, you have um, elective in semester one, semester two, and semester three starts from your second year. So you will have, um, the fundamentals and core subjects, the subjects that you need to take is in your uh, course structure, so you have to take it. But for elective subjects, it's something that you have to choose. You can choose, yeah, they, they offer a list of subjects and you can choose um, one subject for each of the semester. Right, so why you are in business management, right? Because um, we are, like what Dr. Faris has mentioned, what uh, Dr. Aldis has mentioned, 
because we emphasize on building the entrepreneurial leaders. Yeah, we want to embed the entrepreneurial skills yeah, to all these uh, students for BPM. All right, we also emphasize on soft skills development for all our students in terms of communication, teamwork, yeah, leadership, critical thinking, creative and innovation thinking, design thinking, creative problem solving, and inventive problem solving. So we, want, we are emphasized on this so that when you graduate with PBM, you know, you become um, uh, what you call um, a students or a graduate yeah, with, with um, a very good uh, soft skills. Um, as well as preparing graduate for digital transformation technologies because we are offering uh, subjects in um, like analytical programming, analytical, uh, we have management, um, digital science, uh, and all the subjects that will prepare you yeah, for the digital transformation technology, especially now in the new you know, era with all these uh, new technologies that's coming soon. Right, career prospect, we are preparing you to become, you know, innovators, uh, entrepreneurs, as well as future leaders in any organizations that we will join, you know, in your future. All right, so we, um, like what Dr. Faris mentioned as well, we have various entrepreneurial initiatives in the faculty as well as in the, at the university level. So we have a lot of, um, you know, competitions that you can join, a lot of, you know, initiatives that, um, no, you can to build up your entrepreneurial skills, right? And as well, we have lots of outside classroom activities. Uh, we 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 do. Uh, it's not just you know lecture and tutorial like what um, Miss Hamzatu mentioned. So we have a lot of this happening outside the classroom, uh, especially when you know you, you guys can come back to the campus. So we can have fun doing. You know, many, many things, yeah, outside the campus. We can have our field trip back, we can have our USR activities. You know, I used to have USR activities with my students, right? So we're going to have that when everything has, you know, come back to normal, right? So, again, you know, the secret of getting ahead is getting started. So here you are, all of you now, here is to get started right so fasten your seat well now we, we just go ahead yeah and if you need help you can make a u-turn or you can uh, turn to you know reverse gear and look for all of us here right is that thank you very much and see you around and lastly don't drink and drive don't text and drive okay so uh <laughs> Yeah, just to let you know, uh, I've known uh, Madam Hasriza for like 21 years back. <laughs> so, in, 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 in various positions, okay? Uh, both of us are from uh, practitioners. Uh, she is uh, from HR and I'm from the accounting department in MMU. Uh, we are actually working in MMU in the department before we become a lecturer. Uh, so we, I, we think that we deal better with student rather than <laughs> HR and accounting matters. So that's why we go on as an academy. So um, we, we rewind again um, as um, we are going to invite uh, Dr. Chun from Bachelor of Analytical Economics to share the uh, program details for Bachelor of Analytical Economics. Okay. okay, good morning everyone. Okay, thank you for uh, welcome. You all to come to MMU. Okay, so I'm the Dr. Jun. You can call me Dr. Jun, normally people call me like that. Uh, I'm the program coordinator for BAE program. Okay, so I know most of you here, you are uh, not economic student, but I got student here. So, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, if you are BAE students, right, can you please uh, type again BAE in the chat box? Let me see. BAE. 
BAE, if you are BAE student, can you please uh, write in the chat box? Let me see how many students I have here. No. Are you shy? I'm waiting for you, huh? <laughs> Please? You think what? I'm waiting. No. Just now, I think they got a few students, right? Eh? A few students, huh? Okay. So anyway, never mind. Let me start my presentations. If you are not joining BAE, then you are the one who uh, lost this good opportunity. <laughs> uh, see, uh, do you know who they are, these people? Do you want to become one of them? They are the top Malaysian economics. Okay? So, some, they are the, I think they are the very popular economics, top economics. Some of them, they are the policy economics. They are banker. They are financial economics. They are uh, welfare economics. These people. Okay? How to become like them? How to become one day become an, a top economics? So you have to join BAE. No, no other choice. Because in Malaysia, right, not many universities that offer bachelor analytical economics. Only MMU. Okay, most of the local universities, right, what they offer is only Bachelor of Economics or Bachelor of Global Economics. So, analytical economics, right, is only offered by MMU. So now, so what's, what is so different of Bachelor of Analytical Economics? So basically, do you think economics still got high demand in the market? You got any working opportunity in the future if you become an economist? Of course, see? The employment of economics, right, is projected to be grow 14% from 2019 to 2029, much faster than the average of all occupations. So, to be an economist, you will, you are, means that you, you will be, uh, you, will, you will have better opportunity, then you will get high paid. Do you want to be? Okay, so now, so this degree, right, basically we have a significant hour of economic knowledge. We are not just cover the theory of economics, but also we cover the quantitative programming subjects. So which is very crucial that if you refer to the previous slide, job prospects should be best for those with master degree or PhD with a strong analytical skill and experience using statistical analysis software. So that is a special piece the, the code, the differences, are, uh, the, the difference of our program with other university programs. Okay, we, we are not just prepare our student in terms of economic theory, but we are also prepare our student in terms of the uh, analytical skill. Okay. So these are some of the career prospects. So like economic analysts, like uh, can be researchers or academicians, can be financial consultants, can work with economics planning units, okay, as a banker, work in the public sectors, okay, can be the economic development advisors, and etc. So, since we are living in the data revolution, so economics, we need, we are not just need to equip ourselves with the economics theory, but also we need to equip ourselves with the analytical and technology skill. So, this program we cover not just all the core economic subjects, as I mentioned just now, we cover also analysis subjects. Okay? So if you refer to here, that is the value of PAE. So have you looked at the second point? We have in deep analysis and data interpreting through the course, such as econometrics, multivariate data analysis, business modeling and simulations, econometrics modeling and forecasting, Seminar in Analytical Economics. These are some of the core subjects in BAE. Okay, these are some of the core subjects which will, which will equip our students to get ready when they even they join internship, right? Some of our students are even after they, uh, even when they join internship, they already know how to help those companies, right, to run the data analysis. Okay. 
then we are, we are also very strong emphasize on the research skill through courses such as like research project one and research project two. We have two research projects, two semester. So basically almost like eight months like that to conduct a research. Then we have a, a high ratio of the staff holding a PhD. Okay, most of our staff, we have a PhD. Then student staff ratio also considered very low. Okay, so that's why normally uh, for economics units, right, we have a very good rapport with our students. <coughs> okay, because the, uh, what we call like the student staff ratio considered very low, we, we do not have like, we, we don't take a lot of students, so that's why we have a good rapport with our students. Okay, so these are some of uh, the academic staff. Okay, the existing academic staff. And Dr. Jun, the PC, the program coordinator. So Dr. Go is our HOD. Okay, then we have two associate professors, Dr. Ong and Dr. Tan. So we have Dr. Yvonne, then we have uh, Miss uh, Madam Ellie, then we have the Dr. Mala and also Dr. Nohazri. Okay. So how to join BAE? These are the few methods. If you have foundation, if you complete a one year foundation, okay, you can straight away join our BAE program. Okay. Then second, if you have a diploma in financial or in finance or management, okay, with, then you can get a credit transfer up to nine subjects. Okay. Third, if you have diploma program from FOB or in Malacca, okay, or FCI or FISD, so you can get a credit transfer eligibility also can uh, less than or equal to nine subjects. Okay. So after you join the BAE program, right, when you complete the BAE program, in order to get working opportunity, better career prospect in the future, right, you can join our postgraduate program. Understand? After BAE, you can join our postgraduate program, you can join the master program and field program. Or then to further your study, then you will get the alumni discount. Okay, these are the entry requirements. Okay, this is referred to the first one, the top one refer to the international student, the second one refer to the local student. Okay, these are some of the basic requirements. These requirements are right, similar like almost all the university in Malaysia. Okay, this is a standard requirement. Okay. Okay, like I mentioned the program structure. If you look at the program structures, right, the MPU subject is similar with other programs. Most of other programs, we have these 14 credit hours. Okay, we have these 14 credit hours, MPU. Okay, then we have the foundation subjects, uh, 30, 36 credit hours. Then we have the core subjects, 30. Then we have the major subject, 30, and the track subject, 12. The difference, right, we have track. Have you noticed that in other programs, most of the programs, they don't have track. So this track can be considered in other music, we can say it is a minor. So from here, you can choose either you want to be financial economics or you want to be development economics. We have two tracks currently. So that is uh, what we call like a track subjects. Okay. So these are the uh, some of the MPU subjects. Okay. Then the foundation subjects. With the core subjects, okay, we have mathematics for economics, econometrics, uh, economy, the economy of Malaysia, analytical programming, research methodology, then international economics, money and banking, and also principle of operation research, and as well as practical training. The practical training is right, we have six credit hour. Okay, six credit hour for practical training. Then intermediate micro, these are the major subjects. So intermediate micro, right, actually it is the second level of microeconomics. Okay, so intermediate micro, intermediate macro, research project one and two, Environmental resources economics, in order to take all these subjects, right? There are certain prerequisites. You have to pass the previous some of the foundation subjects, then only you can take these subjects. Okay, then we have multivariate data analysis, research modeling, like mentioned just now, and etc. Then this is our track subjects. So for the track subjects, we have financial economics, choose only four subjects, and development economics, choose only four subjects. So you, if you choose financial economics, right, you choose either one. You can choose investment, you can choose behavioral finance, you can choose international finance, and assemble it in different semester. Okay, but must be four subjects. Okay, then if you choose development economics, right, you can choose uh, labor economics, comparative economic study, knowledge economy, and urban economics. Okay, so, so far, okay, 
we have produced quite a lot of successful alumni. So, like for example, we have uh, like Tae Siu Yin is our vice president for UOB Bank. Tell me, is one of the senior economics who are working in Bank Nagara. So, if you join BAE programs, right, you will have the opportunity to be work intensive with Bank Nagara because uh, he's our alumni. He's sometimes he always come to MMU to uh, provide some assistance and then maybe internship program etc. With us, then. Like for example, we have Miss Ivans, okay, and Bank Senior Risk Manager. Then we recently, right, we have a, one of our student, Hazmi Hamiza, also just received a MMU Chancellor Award. Okay, why just now? Why I say our program different than others? You look at most of the others economic program. What they offer is only pure economics, uh, concept economics, theory subjects. But BAE. This program we are not calling Bachelor of Economics, we call Bachelor of Analytical Economics. So there's a combination of analytical skill with the economics theory. That is the strength, and then there's a core, and then there's a differences between our program with other university programs. Okay, thank you everyone. Okay, thanks. So where's my student just now? <laughs> not here. Okay, so if you want to ask me more questions, so you can just email to me. Okay, thank you. Okay, have a nice day again. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Chun. Thank you, Dr. Chun, for your uh, lovely presentation. Uh, that, that's what happened when, when we do online classes. All right. So everybody close their um, camera and we can only see faces and whatnot. We are not sure whether they are there and everything. So. Yeah, we, we just have a, a positive mind that everybody is there uh, in front of the PC, all right? So, uh, as I mentioned, uh, Hazmi Hamizan was the, uh, he won the MMU Chancellor Award, okay, for 2020. Uh, he is now attached to Hazana Hamisha, all right? Yeah, so, um, yes. All right, so, uh, next we have the uh, Bachelor of Marketing, all right? I would like to invite a uh, newly graduated Dr. Uh, Vincent. Uh, okay, a uh, very good morning to all. Yeah, and those who are decided to choose Bachelor of Marketing as your degree. So as uh, I'm here to actually introduce to you all what is Bachelor of Marketing and what is consist within the program. So, um, okay, so first and foremost, I'd like to start with introducing all our academician that is teaching in marketing. So, of course, we have our head of department, Dr. Tan, all right? I mean, she's here today at, uh, online virtually, so maybe later she can uh, go online and say hi to all of you. And secondly, we have Dr. Nasrin, yeah? And then third, we have Dr. Abdullah, and the fourth, we have Dr. Melissa, Dr. June. Dr. Noaslin, Dr. Ara, and last but not least, me, Vincent, uh, the program coordinator for this uh, degree. All right, so there's eight of us here. So what I'm going to share with you today for Bachelor Marketing, there's only five things. As stated here, there's five things, all right? So first and foremost, the first thing that I'd like to share with you that this course is a three-year course, and what you're going to learn that, all right, of course, there's knowledge, all right? What knowledge we're going to share with you is on contemporary marketing theory. So what is regard, what is marketing will be shared with you all in depth throughout these three years, all right? And the context, all right? We do not talk about international. Most books are all talking about those Western. We also try to make it localized, like introducing what is happening in Malaysia and what are the techniques and strategy and methods that can uh, build up your business or improve your marketing, all right? And the third one, we always look into upgrading and improving our our delivering of our lectures so we have methods our methods of modern learning methods which is consists of team-based learning and also blended learning so all this will be making our classes more interesting it's no longer just one way whereby lectures stand and talk for three hours no we want to have our students to contribute as well so being a lecturer, sometimes, most of the time, the student will be talking instead of me. So I'll be sitting down, the student will be sharing and then contributing. And then some will be disagreeing with this student's point and they will be sharing. All right. So this is what interaction we look at for our methods of teaching. All right. So that's the first thing. Secondly, what are the subjects taught? Okay. So people, most of the time, there's misinterpretation saying that marketing is very easy. I can just open a book, read, that's it. 
No, what we look for is marketing is actually beyond that, right? So what we, talk, we cover here in these three years is that we have the traditional marketing subject, which is the principal marketing. And of course, now we need to improve which we have digital or marketing subject, all right? So in later on, I will show you all the subjects and you, do not, you won't be seeing digital marketing as one subject, why? Because all digital marketing elements are embedded into all our subjects. You know, if you see a subject digital marketing by itself, then it's like compiling everything into one subject. For us, we don't do that, we split. So each subject, we have approximately 16 subjects for specialization. So each subject will be include embedded with digital. So by the time you graduate, you'll see different digital elements under different subjects or different area of marketing. Okay, so that's number two. The third one, we have the digital transformation subject. So this is because where we engage technology. So you have some subject that focuses on technology. So when you go to work that time, you know how to handle all those technological equipment, all the program, all the system, and also maybe data analysis, okay? And last one, we have elective subject. So this is up to the student to choose. We have option for marketing subject and non-marketing subject, which I will be sharing with you later. All right, what are the marketing subjects that's elective and what are the non-marketing subjects that's elective? So these are the second thing, subjects that we covered, all right? So in future, when you go up, people say marketing is easy. No, marketing is not just selling, it's more than that, all right? What is it consist? Uh, later, we go into the breakdown, okay? The third one, all right, so why, why we look at marketing is that we are updated. But like I mentioned, we always update our information. We don't just use textbook, we don't teach from textbook, we teach, uh, we share. I would rather say we share because marketing is very evolving. It's evolving. So nowadays, you can say you're an expert in marketing. You actually keep continuing growing and learning. So that's where we look at updated course. And then, of course, we our subjects are all aligned to digital trends. So you'll be knowing, you will know how to use technology, all right? Like how to use all those different, different programs, different software different apps okay so that's on that and the next one we look at the learning method so as to elaborate further what our uh learning methods is we use the traditional of course that's always traditional and then we also look at research articles all right like published articles from uh from practitioners okay uh, journals from academicians so we use that as a case study all right then the third one we use videos okay video as our part of teaching and don't be surprised sometimes during one of subject you will require to do videos as well to impart or to share what you have learned to your fellow classmates and all these data will be shared to all those people we upload to youtube so other people can benefit as well so you don't believe you can actually look at some of the videos all right and the third one we have online so like now due to the uh, pandemic or all right, we all are on, doing online. So again, online you have activities to engage students and not just one way. And the fourth, the fifth one is experiential learning. Uh, what is experiential learning? So basically, it's instead of just learning theory and absorbing all this information, we will look in terms of projects or activities for you to practice this, this theory that you have learned. That's why it's called experiential learning. What are the techniques? We have basically sometimes every semester we have bazaars whereby students need to input all their theories that they learn, all right, in the class to sell the product to the other people, to the customers. So this is on experiential learning, okay? And the last one, of course, we look at the next thing, the skills. So ultimately what you want to gain from this program is that the skills. So we will look at communication. Why do we say communication? So those who are taking Bachelor of Marketing, we prepare to have substantial amount of impromptu and presentation. Substantial amount. I will not say a lot, I say substantial, okay? So communication. So that's where your presentation skill will improve. Up to SN, impromptu, you'll be able to talk and share. So that's our aim, okay? And the next one, we look at leadership and team skill. So that's where we have a lot of group work, group activities, all right, whereby everyone in the group will practice their roles as if that you're running a company all right the team leader secretary treasurer uh, or different person will be assigned and this will be reported in your assignment all right and the third one we have critical thinking and problem solving as well 
So usually all our assignments are all case study and also research based. So that's where the lecturer will not be telling you what to do. We give you the aim, the outcome. So you go and do whatever you need to do to get the results. And of course, along the way, we allow a consultation whereby you can meet up your lecturers and ask them whether are you on the right track. There's no clear cut spoon feeding around. All right, we don't spoon feed. Everything is through what you think and what you feel. And ultimately, the outcome of doing so, you will learn a lot. Okay. And the fourth one is creativity and innovation. Again, in the assignment, you will require to suggest solution. Come up with your own, your own marketing plan. Come up with your own plan, your ideas. All right, that is our fourth part of our research. So you come out, research about a company, you identify the problem, the next thing you come out your solution. So that's where creativity and innovation comes in. And the big one, entrepreneurial thinking. So of course, certain marketing pro project that we have, we will want you to make sure that you are in the shoe of that particular company. We don't want you to look at the third party point of view. We want you to be in that particular view, in that shoe, right? To see how, if let's say you are in that position, how you will act and what's your plan. So that's where you will have the entrepreneurial thinking. So at the end, after you finish graduate, you will know like, oh, I can start a business. Oh, this is how people do it. This is what I want to do. So when you go out, you can even start. And in fact, when during your studies, you can even start your own side business. All right. I know a few students that during their degree, they do, they do side business. And of course, they do count and consult us once in a while, like whether, what can I do to increase my sales? So of course, being a lecturer, we try to back, uh, give advice. Uh, of course, advice free or judge. At the same time, the student will get to see and experience firsthand. And besides that, we do invite industrial practitioner. And these industrial practitioner are not just uh, CEO or even managers. We would like to invite those uh, startups, come people that come out and start their own business from scratch. So that's where they will share their ideas, their experience, their what they call it, the obstacles, which we cannot get in books. All right, we will not be able to get all this in books. So we invite all these people in to share. All right, okay, so that's on our entrepreneurial thinking. And last but not least, and marketing graduates, marketeers are highly sought after by all industry. All right, why do I say so? Later I will explain to you why all industry look for marketeers. And these are the name of few that a career that you can embark on. After graduating, we have product development, communication, promotion, brand management, event management, digital marketing, okay, and research, logistics, service, and other venture, and many, many more. Actually, don't worry. Once you have marketing degree, you can work anywhere. The best, be your own boss, okay? All right, so now, because these are the five things I like to explain to you, now let's go to some of the details, which is the program structure. We have four elements here, the MPU courses, which is compulsory for all students. It's total 14 credit hours, all right? Then we have the marketing core, all right, which is core marketing, which is all most students from other, de other degree courses will be taking, you know, which is the core. And last but the third one is on specialization. This is only for marketing major students. All right, and last one, we have elective. These are all options that consist marketing and non-marketing subjects, which is the student can actually choose. All right, so these are the 14 credit hours. I will not just go through this, I will just skip. Now, marketing course subject, you can see there's 16 subjects. All right, we have all the, the common subjects which other degree are also taking, all right, to give you the foundation. So that when you go to work, these are all your foundation. You can read accounts, you can read finance, you can look at uh, anything that you can see related to business. Okay, now let's go to the specialization. As I mentioned, we don't have specialized digital marketing as one subject because all digital marketing are embedded into all these 14 subjects. Okay, we have sales and professional selling management. So how do you conduct sales and professional selling using internet? All this will be embedded, don't worry. And right, then we have marketing channel management, research methodology, retail marketing, business to business marketing. Nowadays we can do B2B as well because of technology. Okay, then we have product planning and management. You will start to know how to learn how to develop your own product, customize your own product. Okay, then we have integrated marketing communication. This is where you will learn about 
how to communicate with your customer or audience nowadays with uh, social media we don't call customer we call the audience so how are you going to connect your audience so it's under integrated marketing communication we have consumer behavior all right internet marketing uh, this is a very clear-cut technology whereby you learn about how to start a business or selling using internet as a medium then we have technology and innovation marketing so this is not necessarily selling consumer goods we are talking about selling technology as well like maybe handphone or any technological items so we look at high-end products so you learn how to innovate as well and then marketing research marketing strategy seminar web marketing global marketing so you can see all this encompass from low-end product to high-end product from customer to business so it covers all angle and digital marketing are embedded to all these 14 subjects and last one we have industrial training six credit hours all right i'm being an in, uh, internship coordinator before previously every time before even our semester start we have companies asking for interns they will say insert can we need marketing interns can you send your student i want three i want five i say how am i going to give you student when our students have secured their own internship you see companies grab interns and in the internship we have this course site visit whereby we need to visit organizations most of the time companies will say your student especially ms student they are very independent they come in they give them the task they will do whether it's digital or marketing or content creation or copywriting they can do it why because all subject covers all these elements so for those who are doing internship on your third year soon which is very fast three years time three years time very fast you will be surprised that after going through all the subject you will be able to handle okay so this is on the specialization and last one elective uh, this is one thing something that i wish to share with you all. we have uh, 12 subjects that is marketing and marketing on for this year onwards all right we have these open electives whereby students can actually select subject that's offered from other faculty so there are two subjects here uh, introduction to iot and also social media strategy from fac uh, introduction to iot from foe so you want to go into digital you can go into that subject as well whereby this faculty will be sharing in depth on that technology or the infrastructure okay so this is the elective subject all right now to show you some information on what we do in our daily lecture so we have industrial talk we have classes will have constant ongoing discussion there's no longer we want to have lecturer student talk lecture talk student listen we will have classroom discussion most of the time and then we have outing okay and a few snippets on what is happening we have a lot of activity marketing and last one before i end the session i would like to say thank you for your kind attention and so thank you for choosing bachelor of marketing and i am the pc vincent all right my email is kso at mmu.edu.my and you can contact me and i am very i'm looking forward to work with you all all right those taking my bachelor of marketing and also other students uh, on this great life journey because degree is your passport to get an interview with a prominent organization and last but not least before i end the session i would like to say great marketing is at the heart of every successful business you are marketing business cannot grow all right so all right with that i'm again once again vincent all right signing off and i pass back to the mc dr Aziz. <laughs> okay, uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, sounds like a very good marketer himself. Um, okay, so uh, last but not least, okay, we usually save the last for the best. Okay, uh, <laughs> everybody send their PC uh, for Bachelor of Finance, Bachelor of Financial, they send their own head of department himself. So, uh, that's the thing. Okay, okay. All right. Okay, very good morning. Huh? Good morning. Yeah, very good morning. And welcome to uh, MMU family.
Okay. Welcome to the MMU family. All right. So uh, I am today. I just now Dr. Aziz introduced. I am uh, HOD of a uh, unit finance. All right. Under finance unit, we have two bachelor program. Uh, two bachelor program. One is a bachelor of finance. We call it POF. And the PC is Dr. Kwan, uh, Dr. Kwan. Another is a Bachelor of Financial Engineering. And the program coordinator is here, Kwan uh, Sarihan. Kwan uh, Sarihan. All right. So I'm like just now, they mentioned I'm the last presenter. So we will combine this program and then give you the, this uh, briefing together. I hope the online the student that means register with Bachelor of Finance and Bachelor of Financial Engineering. Uh, still, I believe still with us, lah. Okay, all right. So, uh, uh, allow me to give you some briefing about this. Uh, start with a uh, bachelor of finance. Okay, so bachelor of finance, the aim basically is to produce the graduate with in-depth knowledge, critical thinking, and analytical skill in fine in finance decision making. All right. So you can see, you can notice that. Uh, very important through the, this education, we need to make decisions. Especially here, we make about financial decision. In fact, every day uh, we deal with a uh, financial matter. So it's very important you apply the knowledge, all right? Not only your day, not only your day-to-day -day decision, but to the company, all right? So. In the, this Bachelor of Finance, we will zoom in to three important components. We will emphasize on the financial and analytical skills. So you will be taught with subject like corporate financial strategy, financial directive. Huh? Financial directive is very interesting. Example like financial directive. Uh, I, I share just very fast, I share you with uh, one case. Huh? Uh, back to the last year during the MCO, uh, during MCO, uh, you still, you, I think you read the news about petrol price plumped into negative. Still, still aware of this case. Uh, the petroleum price per barrel go down become negative 30 to 40. Uh, the one is linked to the financial directive. Okay, linked to the financial directive. So you were exposed to a lot of this uh, financial knowledge and also current issue. And besides that, you also will be embedded with uh, IT skill. Huh? Here, now we cannot run away from the IT knowledge, okay? Especially FinTech, uh, digital, uh, all these things. So here we will teach you like digital transformation, technology, financial modeling. And also from time to time, we will organize workshop uh, conference that related to the fintech. Okay, okay. Here I would like to share you share with you about the career prospect. Huh? Right. It means that if you know about early about from the early, you know about the career prospect. You can make better preparation. Huh? It's very important. Make that uh, early preparation. Opportunity always reserved for, for those who are ready to prepare. Okay, so for the finance graduate, in fact, it's, uh, always have a high demand and consider quite well paid. All right, you can work with the fund manager. All right, fund management. All right, example like uh, you work in the fund management company as a junior financial analyst, trader, or research analyst. Here we have a lot of uh, well-known fund management. In fact, most of the insurance company, they also have their fund management. So you can work with them. All right. Uh, beside that, of course, work in the bank. Huh? Work in the bank. If you notice from Busa, the largest bank, the largest company, Bay Bank. The second largest, public bank. All right. In terms of market cap. So you can see there are plenty of the job opportunity come from the bank. You can work like credit consultant, uh, compliant consultant, uh, mortgage consultant or financial planner, etc. All right. So, and then if you don't like work in the bank, you don't like to deal with the figure, all these things every day, 
In fact, if you graduate from the finance, uh, bachelor of finance degree, you also can work with any industry because most of the company, they need finance people. You can work like, example, like uh, finance analyst, corporate finance, because all the industry need these people. And for another one, especially this one, okay, especially the last one, the yellow one, okay, especially for youngsters, they are very, very fancy this area, startup, example like Greg, huh? example like uh, Food Panda. They need these two experts, which is called financial projection and valuation officer. So you can engage with this kind of company. Okay, then, like just now I highlight to you, finance unit in this university, they offer two bachelor program. One is a B or F, just now I explained, bachelor of finance. Another one is a bachelor of financial engineering. The PC is a, a Puan Sarehan. Eh? So this one, they give you even extra, extra, extra so-called uh, knowledge to you. Bachelor of financial engineering is the intercept of three areas. Max, IT, and finance. So equip you with the very strong for you to the prepare for the job market. So it equip the candidate with knowledge, brand in IT, Max, and finance. All right. So for BAT, uh, the focus on the four important components okay, in the finance and mathematic modeling for business decision making, uh, like for exposed to like mathematical programming, applied probability, and Monte Carlo, etc. And beside that, of course, IT subject, digital media, digital media business, digital transformation, analytical programming, and business analytical. And of course, FinTech. And one of the important thing here is uh, for the Bachelor, for the BAT, Bachelor of Financial Engineering, uh, we have a research project. Research project in fact is very important. Huh? You are required to come up with uh, one of the research project. And here at MMU, we got one very, very important asset. We have a Bloomberg Terminal. Bloomberg Terminal is one of the very expensive and sophisticated data source. And very lucky, MMU, we have this one. So you can access to all this information to prepare your uh, this research project. Okay, from the job prospect, okay, just now I highlight to you there is an extra point. Yes, right, for BAT, because you equip with the max IT and finance, all right, besides just now I shared with you the job prospect, you also can work as a finance engineer and finance consultant in software and technology company. Okay, and Okay, then this is a, one of the very reliable uh, job uh, survey from the ADU Advisor 209. And he ranking that, he ranked that finance related job always is a high demand, well, quite well paid. In fact, it's the third highest according to this survey. All right. Okay. So, program structure BOF uh, is a two years program. Okay. 122 credit hour, okay, and spread to uh, six classifications. BAP, three and a half year, 137 credit hour, okay. And this is a, uh, this is a breakdown of the program structure. I think I will not go into detail, but one thing I think similar with other PC advice, try to stick to the, this program structure so that you can graduate right on time okay according to your time frame and this is a breakdown for the BAP okay and the last one here is I want to share with you this is uh, some of the activity conducted during 2019 okay maybe 2020 because of COVID-19 right so I share with you the 2019 in fact we have conducted a lot of the activity we call it soft skill to Enhance your soft skill development, like stock challenge, Busan, Malaysia visit, CFA, uh, career day, CFA, uh, ethic challenge, has we see career talk, has we see field trip, chartered financial analyst, PND visit, and quiz. There are plenty, I think, more than that. 
All right. So if you have any question, do feel to contact me or PC. Thank you. All right. All right. Uh, so that's that's the end of the uh, briefing from the program coordinators. So as mentioned by all the program coordinators, please make sure you follow your cost structure. All right. Please make sure you follow your cost structure because your structure is different from your seniors. It's going to be different from your juniors. So what would I would like to suggest is because we are very concerned about the graduate on time, percentage of number of students. If you are doing BFE, three and a half, uh, three and a half years. If you are doing uh, accounting, it's four years and whatnot. So I would like to suggest for you to print it in A4, laminate it and post it on your uh, wall. All right. So have it uh, as your uh, wallpaper of your handphone is your uh, is your program structure so that oh I need to do that right so because some of the subject is only offered once a year ah so what some of subjects offered once a year so if you miss that particular offering then you need to wait for another year for it to be offered so uh, especially if that particular subject is a prerequisite kalau you tak lepas then you have to wait for another prerequisite and then you have to wait for yeah all right so. Uh, but however, we we'll try to assist you wherever we can. Okay. Uh, usually, we have to slow talk with the lecturer. Lah. Can we offer this subject? Can we offer this subject? And that kind of thing. So, um, yeah. So with that, I do believe that's the end of the session for today. However, I have uh, one announcement for those who are FTD and B2D, from foundation to degree and diploma to degree. Maybe you can stay a bit. Uh, on the uh, Google uh, meeting room and also those of you here that are from F2D and D2D, uh, there's an announcement from uh, our beloved Miss Dalila. All right. So, uh, and then if for those who are from direct uh, degree, uh, you are dismissed. So, you can stay if you want to uh, chat with the uh, program coordinators and uh, for the rest of you, I wish to see you again on campus. But before that, can we take a group photo? Ah, how are we going to group, uh, take a group photo? It's physical and online. <laughs> I'm also wondering how. Can you switch on your camera, please? Your beautiful faces. Oh. Uh, zoom up. Oh, all right, all right. So, can you please uh, can you just switch on your? Switch on your camera. So we'll make our picture there. Yeah, kita semua beramai-ramai. Wait up back here. Those that are there, you can you can go at the back here. Yeah? All right. Switch on your cameras. Our profile is ready. Malan. Bye bye. They are so much. Nampak, nampak? Dekat belakang ni nampak lagi. Ah, ni, ni, ni. Penjarakan sosial. Ah, depan ni boleh. Ah, kan tu sekat depan ni pernah tu.
Ah, kan kat sana. Ilo tak masuk. Okey. Ha, ilo duduk, ilo duduk. Ha. Kau nak bawa balik berkemah. Pinofal. Apa kira? Apa kira? Okay, uh, free side. Ya, ya. Kira. Aziz nak kira. Ya, ya, ya. Lilo tengah copy and paste lah. Senyum macam mana? Itu dulu. Diorang okey lah. Diorang online boleh senyum. Kita tak boleh senyum. Kita buat macam ni ya? Okey, okey. Boleh tak? Okey 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 Okay, okay. Okay, okay. Okay, okay. Alright, so, yeah, so with that, thank you very much, guys. So for those who are from FTD and D2D, please stay back. Uh, thank you, Paul. Thank you, uh, Dr. Azlin. Thank you, everyone. Uh, thank you, Dr. Tan. Uh, for those who are from FTD and D2D, uh, please stay back. Okay, we have some announcement for you. Just a short one, uh, and then for the rest, uh, you are dismissed. See you in campus. All right, thank you.
Hello, Assalamualaikum. Um, Azniati here. Okay, for those um, returning students uh, just com uh, completing your foundation program. Uh, okay, this is uh, this is the announcement made by um, the management to all students. So I believe Puan Dalila also has emailed you this uh, info pack. It's for you to go through and then uh, pick up uh, important information uh, which is useful, especially for uh, uh, returning to campus. Okay, um, I believe the president uh, himself also has uh, sent email to all students on um, the methods of classes for semester three, uh, which is, uh, it will be in hybrid mode. Um, meaning um, all lectures will be uh, via online methods and um, tutorial you have option whether to go via online or face-to-face uh, -face. okay so um, okay these are the the announcement which has also been shared by a student service center a few days ago through bulletin board and also has been emailed by, by Puan Dalila to your personal email okay um, um sorry uh, to those who has not yet uh, received email from puan dalila on this info pack uh, you may contact her directly so that she can email to you this info pack okay basically it's actually on um, returning to campus and also the deadline for certain activities starting uh, first week of the new trimester. For example, the release of results, release of results uh, for trimester two will be on um, 8 April after 4 p.m. After 4 p.m. meaning after our Senate uh, members has uh, endorsed the results in their meeting on the 8th uh, Thursday. So after four, you can check your results online, uh, which will be released by the examination unit upon com uh, completion of the uh, Senate meeting. And then um, for those completing their foundation, um, you may check your status uh, by Friday, 9 April, meaning during that time, your status will be changed to your degree program. You can check uh, uh, through CAMSIS. Okay, and then subject registration. Okay, uh, subject registration. You got to do it on your own. Uh, upon um, change of status from foundation to um, degree program. Okay, so results out by 8 and then 9, you can check your status and then by 10, you can start register your subjects. Okay. I don't want to, to, to highlight on the reinstatement or dismiss because um, I am not hoping for that but the info is also available in this info pack if it happens that you are one of those who need the information on reinstatement uh, due to dismiss status. There's also a schedule for appeal for remarking. If you think that um, there are one or two subjects that you like to check for remarking, uh, the information is available in the info pack and the deadline and what to do, who to contact is also uh, available as stated in the info pack. Okay. Um, supplementary um, foundation student, we did not have supplementary for semester two. And then um, please go through 
um, this info pack so that you can pick up um, important things or things that you would like to know. Um, actually, this information normally uh, will be announced at the examination unit early in the trimester because this is more like a trimester planner. Uh, they usually um, announce this through bulletin board. So you can also check the information there. Okay. Um, so far, any questions? Any questions you may type through the chat box? Monisha, okay, good. Anybody else? Do you have any questions you would like to check? Or if you have questions after this, you can you can email to Puan Dalila. Puan Dalila is uh, our officer in charge in FOM for degree program. Okay, you check, uh, you contact uh, Puan Dalila or you can also email myself, Azniati. If you have any queries or anything that you would like to check further that you are not clear of, um, or you wanted to know who's your program coordinator, even though they have just finished their briefing just now, maybe you, you did not pick up who is who, so you can check with us. And it's, it's actually also available in uh, FOM website as well. So uh, you can check it there. Okay, anything else that you'd like to know? you like to check with us? I give you two or three minutes more. i wait for your questions. If not, we can end the session. Ada, tak ada. Okay, um, bef okay. Before you do your uh, course, reg your subject registration uh, on the 10th of April, uh, you know that our methods of classes is hybrid. Make sure you choose uh, correctly. Yeah, if you um, lecture, definitely 100% online. Uh, we have option for tutorial, um, face to face or uh, online. So um, you will know which station is online, which station is face to face. Online normally we have what? What the? What? Okay, online classes um, with V. Uh, uh, you 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 check the code uh, for the session. If it's um, contain V, meaning it's virtual. It's online. Uh, other than that, it's face to face. So. Choose wisely whether you wanted to come back for tutorial only or you wanted to settle everything uh, through online, it's up to you. Okay, so I hope to see you around if you choose to, uh, you choose the face-to-face -face tutorial. Um, we will start uh, open our office, even though it will, it will not a full blast um, methods, but there will be stuff uh, available in the, uh, in, in the office. Uh, and we will also open our counter as well. Uh, maybe before this, you did not have the opportunity to deal with us face to face. So you are most welcome to check our office. I hope to see you. So if no more questions, I think uh, I can, I shall end the session here. Okay. So all the best with your results. Uh, another two more days. And um, welcome back to MMU. Welcome back to FOM. Okay, thank you. Assalamualaikum. Bye.